so I've had this idea rattling around in my brain for a while now. I'm trying to create a inflation deflation system that works on a couple hob switches and a Mac valve and a few relays that allows me to press a button and have my tires inflate or deflate to a preset pressure as opposed to monitoring a gauge or doing each tire individually. And in this video, I start to figure out the ups and downs, the pros and cons of this system, and what we need to do moving forward. In this video I'm using a combination of hob switches and uh, Mac valves and brass fittings and a bunch of stuff that I've cobbled together throughout thinking about this particular system and how I could make it work and I'll go over some of the specifics in this video. A hob switch is a pressure activated electronic switch so there are certain ranges of pressure that the hob switches are sold in and for this particular system I have a low pressure switch and a high pressure switch. So I've got all of my mechanical stuff mounted back here. I got the compressor, the air manifold, I'll have the air chuck, and also the pressure switches mounted back here. Being that I don't have a spare tire, there's plenty of real estate. I've got a great spot for the compressor, and as you'll see in this video, I also end up plumbing the intake of the compressor up into the cab, so this is a really great spot to house this system, as there's plenty of room for the compressor and the manifolds, and having the air chuck right out the back is pretty convenient. I'm just gonna show you quick where the adjustment is. I don't know if that's in focus or not, but it's in here. There's an Allen head in here with this little rubber cap, and you can adjust between the range that you bought it for. Like one of these, I believe, is a two to seven and one of them's a 30 to 35 or something along those lines. So you can adjust it within those within that range. Now, obviously I have to have a gauge on there and that cap goes right back there. All right guys, so the rear is all done. I have this extra wire here in case I wanna run two compressors down the road. Um, but I got my chuck mounted here. Um, this is the tailgate actually right here, so I can install it currently, but if you open the tailgate, you'll have much more access and you can grab this and obviously you can come from underneath. Um, three, it's airline here, a couple switches here. I have my quarter inch drain line going forward. Air compressor is all mounted. Uh, ground I put over here, just super easy. Um, this is all attached, looking nice. So I gotta move forward now and mount the uh, dump valve, the MAC valve, 
And I think after that, it's just the relays and hooking up the switches. So let's get to it. All right, guys, I wanted to take this time to let you know that I still have a giveaway going on right now. I'm going to link the video up in the corner of the screen right here. As soon as I hit 2,500 subscribers, I'm giving away a bunch of stuff, a bunch of cool recovery stuff, some Oxbeam pod lights, and a swag pack. Three different winners, gonna be super cool. Make sure you check out that video. I also wanted to let you know that right now, until the giveaway is done, I'm doing 20% off your entire order at mechanicaladventures.com. I have some new pre-order t-shirts, I got a new design, a bunch of new colors, some hoodies, stickers, koozies, you name it. So after this video, make sure you check out mechanicaladventures.com for 20% off your entire order automatically applied at checkout. And as you guys can see, I got a really clean, really dry spot for the intake of the air compressor. I was just gonna put it in here, but because I didn't seal up the wheel well very well, and also their, their, uh, the cabin sort of vent is here, um, I'm seeing a lot of sand from you know water and all that kind of stuff. So I decided to go one further, and I got it up here by the tail light. This is all going to be covered by the panel, so it shouldn't be too loud. And it's nice, clean, dry, out of the way. So pretty jazz on that. On to the next. All right, guys. Well, I think it's finished. I just buttoned up the last wiring connection and I'm going to test it out for the first time here real time. I, this is all, you know, on paper, barroom napkin type theory that I'm running on here. So we'll see if it works. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, as you can tell, but once I flip this switch here, we should be powered up the aux beam switch panel again, which ha controls my relays for my air up, air down process. Real quick, we'll just see if it works. Oh. Well, panel's on, that's good. Let's see if I got some light in here. Nope. Um, one, two, three, this should be air compressor. It sure is. And I got major leaks. <laughs> or do I? Interesting, that's a noise of some sort. I'm back feeding. I'm back feeding through a relay. Wait, one. All right, I'm gonna do my best to explain what the problem is. Essentially, I have two pressure switches, a high pressure switch and a low pressure switch. And as the pressure gets close to either one of those, uh, the relays start cycling and that cycles both the dump valve and the compressor itself. And it cycles for five or 10 minutes. So that is really gonna damage the compressor and also very quickly can damage the relays that control this system. So ultimately, it's just not gonna work. Ah. All right guys, well I gotta end this one off here. A Little bit frustrating. Um, didn't quite work how I wanted it to work. Uh, ran into a couple issues with cycling and speed at the very least. I'm talking a snail's pace. So uh, a couple things that I'm gonna try down the road. It's kind of a work in progress. I know that I need another compressor. That one just is slow. I need to upsize all of my hoses, but then I run into an issue of cycling. So a little bit of experimenting in my future as far as this system goes at the very least i have onboard air now i can address a low tire flat tire 
I can air down. Um, the air down works okay. I'm gonna make some adjustments to how I use the system and we'll see if that doesn't make it a little bit quicker and easier. Um, adding a, a ball valve and a pressure gauge and some other things. Um, but it was a fun experiment and worst case scenario, I got a couple extra relays in the engine bay I can use down the road. There are also a couple other companies with a similar product. Um, one of them's neon green and I believe they are working on developing a system very similar or a, a automatic type thing. I don't know all the details, but um, I think this thing needs a brain box to actually function the way I want it to with some sort of timer and uh, you know, pressure sensors, not just on off switches. Um, but it was a fun experiment and I got on board air. It works, it kind of works. I will kill relays and I will kill a compressor if I use it without touching anything, with just plugging it in, turn it on. It'll inflate the tires and it'll deflate the tires, but it's gonna cycle like a son of a bitch. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna kill relays and I'm gonna kill air compressors. And not, not the least of which, I'm gonna be sitting there for 30 minutes. So uh, I will update this system when I have a solution, when I've used it a few times and I figure out how to, how to improve it, make it better. But you win some, you lose some. This was a fun experiment and I'm glad you guys stuck along with me. So we'll see you on the next one.